In Space Watch, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine told the Senate panel Wednesday freezing the agency's funds later this year would be, quote, devastating to the agency's plans. Bridenstine said if Congress fails to reach a consensus on a budget for the 2020 fiscal year, development of a new lunar lander would be stopped in its tracks. Well, earlier this year, the Trump administration ordered NASA to move up its plans to return astronauts to the moon from 2028 to 2024. Jim Bridenstine joins us now with more on the future of space exploration. Good to see you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So we're talking about this. This, um, essentially in the midst of this historic celebration, Apollo 11, 50 years, July 20th, 1969, uh, three men, two men landed on the moon, walked on the moon. Michael Collins was in the, uh, was orbiting uh, the moon. Um, how historic was that and how has NASA's goals evolved from 1969 to today? So the historic achievement was, we have to remember what was happening. We were in the middle of the Cold War, and it was the United States of America against the Soviet Union. And we were trying to demonstrate our technological prowess to the world uh, in an order to show that our political and economic system was superior to that of, of the Soviet Union. And of course, history was made when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon for the first time. Um, and we remember that fondly, but it's also important to remember what happened after that. After that, the Soviet Union said to the United States, that was a monumental achievement. We now want to partner with you. And so the, the dynamic changed in space exploration for the first time in a very positive way. And that was, so the first mission we did together was the Apollo Soyuz mission in 1975. And since then, we've had the space shuttle and the Mir program working together. And now we have Russians and Americans living and working together on the International Space Station for almost 20 years. So this is, we think about the history and we think about where it is today. And now we wanna go back to the moon sustainably. This time when we go to the moon, we want to stay and then go on to Mars and do it with our international partners. And so since we're on this, if I'd, li I'd like to present you two with some gifts for taking the time to cover what NASA is doing. I just mentioned the International Space Station, mm -hmm. which of course has been operating for almost 20 years with um, not just Russians and Americans, but we've had astronauts on the International Space Station from over two dozen countries. Um, so, Anne-Marie, I'd like to give you this coin, which flew right. on the International Very Space Station. Cool. So cool. Very cool. Um, Very pumped. So thank you for Thank you. Your and we had talked earlier about how Canada has like a little, has played you know, a right. little role. And here's a little <laughs> arm on here. Every kid in Canada grows up learning about like the Canadian arm on first the space shuttle. And I learned today also on the space station. Yes. Uh -huh. And Canada is with us when we go to the moon. They want to build another robotic arm. And this is not a little problem. Project, by the way, this is a very difficult thing to do, um, and they are they are the world's experts when it comes to these robotic arms, and we're glad to have their partnership when we go to the moon. Very cool. Very and cool. For, for you, Vlad, um, this is a rover um, that um, what it is currently operating on Mars. We call it um, Curiosity, and Curiosity is discovering m many things all the time. Complex organic compounds are on the surface of Mars. The building blocks for life mm. exist on Mars. Not on the moon, but on Mars. And we know that because of this little rover. It's also true that we've discovered water, liquid water, 12 kilometers under the surface of Mars. And the methane cycles of Mars are commensurate with the seasons. In other words, the probability of finding life on Mars is continuing to go up. And this material that this coin is made out of is the same material that is currently on Mars Operate it, we're using it with the uh, the Mars uh, Curiosity rover. So, Vlad, very this is great. Cool. Cool. Thank you cool. very Thank you. much. Look at that. Yeah, that's fantastic. You you know, know, that, that's actually the design of the rover there. Look at that. That's it is. really awesome. Yeah, I, it's I, about I, the size of a Jeep. I thought, you know, what you said or, or when you were sort of mapping out the timeline in the Soyuz program, and we talked a little bit earlier about this, that, you know, yes, you know, when we talk about NASA, we talk about the science. but. Outside of the science, there is a tremendous amount of goodwill yes. that comes with getting this stuff done. Absolutely. And you, you talked about being in the middle of the Cold War and starting the Soyuz program. And now, as we know, because Vlad and I talk about it almost every single day, there is all this talk about Russian meddling in the election and what it, they're trying to divide us. And still, NASA is finding common ground. So the United States of America, and originally the Soviet Union, now Russia, we have had this partnership since 1975. But it's not just the two nations, it's many nations. We have 15 nations that are operating the International Space Station right now. 
And of course, we want to grow that partnership. We've had experiments on the International Space Station from 103 different nations. The International Space Station is a marvel of technology, but just as importantly, it is a marvel of diplomatic achievement. Um, and of course, we want to take that, that marvel and go all the way to the moon sustainably. President Trump said he wants to go sustainably to the moon. In other words, we don't want it to end like the Apollo era ended. Right. We want it to continue, and we want to prove the capabilities and the technologies to go with commercial partners and international partners, learn what we need to learn, how to live and work on another world, and then go to Mars. And so that's what listen, we're Listen, the president on. moved up the timeline. It sort of reminds yes. me of Kennedy's speech when mm -hmm. he was like, we will go to the moon, right? right. Um, uh, uh, is this a realistic timeline? It is very realistic. Okay. Um, the challenge that we have is we need a lander, the human lander. And of course, the way you opened your segment, if we end up in a continuing resolution, um, that means we're not gonna have the money for that lander. That's the key to this whole, this whole effort. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is also true, um, you know, continuing resolutions in general are not good for the agency, and I think people know that. It, you end up spending money on things that we don't need to be spending money on, right. and we end up not spending money on the things we do need to be spending money on, like the lander. And of course, that's what you were talking about. My testimony, I've, I was in the Senate yesterday ask, you know, answering questions in a hearing, and I'll tell you, um, the senators are, are keen on this. This has bipartisan support. Yeah. This we, is not political, and we just want to make sure we can achieve the end state. So I would. So l let me play somebody, uh, you know, a person on the street who says, "Look, um, we still have uh, poverty in America. Yes. We still have inequality in America. Uh, so. There are infrastructures that are collapsing everywhere you look in this yes. country. Do we really need to send a mission, a man to Mars? We've got." Curiosity there, gathering scientific data. Um, how important, how vital, and more importantly, how expensive will it be to send human beings up there when we could take some of that money and apply here? And the follow-up to that is, look, we already went to the moon. Why is it going to take us another four years? It's sort of like, <laughs> I've already been there. Like, I know what to do. I know how to get there. Like, why would it take four years? Why not go next year? Uh, well, Bill, so there's those yeah, two questions. Absolutely. Sorry. No, it's a great questions all. To start, let's remember this. We think about Apollo, we love Apollo. This was a contest of political ideologies back in the day. Think about where we are today. People watching this might be watching on, they could be watching on DirecTV, Dish Network, they could be watching internet broadband from space. I come from Oklahoma, rural Oklahoma. If you don't have it from space, you're not gonna have internet broadband. These are technologies born from the Apollo era of space exploration, but it's not just communication, it's navigation. GPS technology born from this little agency called NASA, less than one half of 1% of the federal budget. Right now we are proving that we can increase crop yields and decrease water usage to feed more of the world than ever before using technology from space. Mm. The way we produce energy cleanly for clean air and clean water, we can see it from space and help companies make sure that they, what they're doing, they're doing cleanly. Um, of course, when we talk about disaster relief, national security, the, the, the way we predict weather, all of those weather satellites, technologies born by NASA, now NASA is building those satellites for the, the National Weather Service, the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and of course the way we understand our changing climate, which it is changing. All of these technologies, capabilities, and we're just scratching the surface. All of this is available because of this little agency that back in the 1960s said, hey, we need to go to the moon. Uh, and we need to do it to prove that our political system is superior. And that was the goal back then. Mm -hmm. But today it has transformed and elevated the human condition in ways that nobody would have imagined. That legacy is the legacy of NASA. It continues today. We're making new discoveries. And when we find life on another world, I think it's going to open up the imaginations of young people so that, look, here's what we need. We need young people inspired to go into science, technology, engineering, and math. Yes. We, Poverty is a challenge and we need to deal with it as a nation. But the best way to deal with it is to inspire a new generation to go into these very important fields that will grow the American economy and not just the American economy, but inspire the world to do more and better things. Mm. We, and going back to the moon uh, a little faster than uh, four years? Yes, well, going in, we're gonna- we're You gonna, know, we wanna go in 2024, right? 2024, right. and we're gonna go, here's the thing, in the 1960s, all of our astronauts came from test pilots and fighter pilots and they were all men. And now we have this very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps. I have an 11 year old daughter. I want her to see herself as having the same opportunities I saw myself as having when I grew up. And that's why this program, we call it Artemis. 
Artemis is the twin sister of Apollo. Which and I always thought was interesting. Like, we should have called it Artemis back then because we were going to the moon. She is the goddess of the moon. That's right. And Apollo is the god of the sun. <laughs> right. But make it up for it. <laughs> Absolutely. And this time, when we go to the moon under Artemis, uh, we're going to go with a diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps with all of America. All right, really Jim cool. Bridenstine, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.